Hey everyone, welcome back. This is the first video that I am going to start for C programming language. So I thought, let me start with the history of C. People may think what I'm going to do with the history, why should I know about the history? If at all you don't require it, you can skip it, that's not an issue. But people are so much curious about knowing why C has been developed, who developed it and what is the reason behind it. Because anything and everything which is developed in those days not had been done without any reason. So let us see the detailed history of C in few minutes. I'm not going to take much of your time. Just hold your seat tight. Bear with me a few minutes to understand the history of C. Okay. There was an operating system called as Multix. So this Montix was an operating system which was widely used in 60s, early and late 60s. It was widely developed, used by developers and researchers and those people, like because mostly computers are not used uh, by the uh, like by the normal user, like as we have personal computers, desktop computers. Those things are not there before in those days. In early 60s, this was the operating system which was widely used. Now, uh, like as day goes, like we require something new every day, right? And how many of them know there was an operating system called as Windows 95? Most of them doesn't know, right? 98, and there was 2000, Millennium, XP, a lot of operating systems are there when Windows, right? If I give you Windows 95, for example, to you, how many of them willing to work on it? The answer will be no, because you want something new always. You want something fresh always, right? So you don't want an older thing, right? The same thing like Montix was like, they feel that it was a very old and they, they want something new to be done. So this is people want something new. What they thought is that like, they, let us like re, uh, develop a new operating system. So usually most of the development works, anything new to be created is usually done by AT&T Bell Labs. You should be knowing, right? Everyone knows most of the developments and researches are done in AT&T Bell Labs. Now, this Multix, they felt it is very old and very like uh, 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 obsolete one day. They want to create a new one, right? So they, they called up two great, great developers named Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson. You should be knowing about it, right? So Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson, these are the two big, great, great developers. And this AT&T Bell Labs appointed them to develop a new operating system for them. Yes. And after a long research, right, in the late 90, late 60s, that is 1969 kind of range, they developed an operating system called this UNICS. This was developed by Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson. Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson. And they developed this operating system with the help of assembly language. They developed it with assembly language. The operating system was developed, everyone is happy. But one problem was there. The assembly language, you should be knowing, right? People also are already engineers and they were working with engineers. You should be knowing 8085 and 8086, like, where you type the uh, program in one kit and that cannot be transported or that can be transferred. Nothing can be done. It is like fixed. If for every system or every machine, you need to type the code again and again, right? It is not portable. The same problem occurred for this Unix operating system. Everything is perfect. They, they develop, the, uh, the development is over. Everything is perfect. But one problem occurred that is the non portability. Everything is perfect about Unix operating system except the portability issue. People were excited, but they're not happy with Unix operating system because it is not portable. It is because it has been developed using the assembly language, which is in turn not portable at all. But what Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson did is that they want to redesign this Unix in a different programming language. But unfortunately, there was no programming language in those time would help them to create a new operating system. After a long uh, finding, they, they f saw a new operating, uh, they saw an already existing uh, programming language called as BCPL. BC? basic combined programming language now this programming language with this programming language they tried to redesign the operating system unix but they miserably failed it didn't work out so what Dennis H. and Ken Thompson did is that instead of instead of trying with a already existing operating system why don't we 
developer, sorry, existing programming language, I'm sorry, beg your pardon. Uh, why don't we uh, develop a new programming language with the help of the new programming language we can redesign Unix. That is what they thought. After doing that, right, after, after discussing so, they started their development. So uh, considering this as like their base, considering this VCPL as their base, they started re uh, developing their own programming language. First, Ken Thompson completed his research. Ken Thompson completed his research on developing a new programming language and he named that programming language as B. Why B? Any, any, any big name behind it, right? Not, nothing big to say what is B, right? What I thought is my uh, assumption, right? I'm not saying I didn't, I was not there in the age of Ken Thompson or Dennis Ritchie, but my assumption is that probably they would have got some, uh, what? Influenced by BCPL. Since he got influence from BCPL, he considered that as A and he named it as B. Maybe? Possible, right? So let us, uh, uh, let me give it to your assumption, right? So that is why Ken Thompson named it as B. That is my assumption, right? So he acquired the information from that. And I think they tried to redesign the programming, they tried to redesign Unix operating system with the help of the programming language B. But again, it didn't work out. So meanwhile, Dennis Ritchie is like continuing his process of research and developing the new operating system. Since he developed next to his friend, he named it as C. What is next to B? In alphabetical order, next to B is C. As simple as that, right? That is what I think and is developed by Dennis Ritchie. Now, they, Dennis Ritchie and Ken Thompson together try to redesign the Unix operating system with the help of the programming language C. Now, they redesigned Unix with the help of C and they named it as UNIX. They designed this use the help of C programming language and whatever you had the issue of portability. Now, that issue got solved. And everyone is happy to have a new operating system called this Unix. That is the history of C. Why C has been developed and how C has been developed. The major purpose of developing C programming language is to redesign the operating system Unix and give us a fresh and good operating system. That is to talk about the history of C. The next video will be seeing more on C programming language. Thank you. If at all you want to help me in some other way, please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.